welcome to Land Rover Toolbox Videos. We have the workshop manual here for the Defender and it clearly shows you how to knock out the bearing races in your hub for your wheel bearings. This will tell you to use a drift. People usually use a brass drift but what we have here are steel or cheap steel drifts which are sufficient for the job since they're so soft. The workshop manual only tell you how to take them out and refit them but we will go a little bit further than this. Land Rover wheel bearings don't need any special presses so they could be done anywhere. It's just a matter of keeping everything scrupulously clean. <laughs> As I said in the introduction, you need a punch and you need one with a flat face so you can hit the edge of the races. Now you have a seal with your bearing that will stay in there until you knock the seal out. Right, so what we can do is knock the inner bearing, race and it will knock the seal out like that. It doesn't take too much of a whack to get it out. We've got the bearings out, we can have a look to see what condition they're in. Try not to hit the bearing cage. If the bearings are in good condition, you can put them back in after cleaning and re-greasing them. If the bearing cage itself gets dented or damaged, the bearing becomes unserviceable. We don't have time to show you the damage that can happen on wheel bearings. However, if you click on the link below this video in the description, it will take you through to the Timkin website where you can download a free PDF document, which is a high resolution chart and this will give you an expert insight to the damage that can happen on wheel bearings. Okay, so in the hub you have two bearing races and these can be knocked out with either a hard or a soft chisel. I just advise not to damage the hub itself. Also, knocking it from the inside outwards, you have an edge which you can knock uh, with your chisel or your punch to get it out. If the bearing is very loose and just drops out, it means that, that it's been spinning in the hub and the hub is unserviceable, so you'll have to replace the whole hub. Right, so this sort of job you can do on the flat somewhere, outside, on a bench, it doesn't matter. Basically, first of all, you want to remove both of the races. But I will warn you, however, to use a tool that hasn't been rounded off on the ends. You want it nice and flat not damaged so nice and flat like this this way while you're knocking it out it won't slip okay so you get this sort of action all right knocking it clean and straight out of the hub don't throw them away just yet because one of these will come in useful later however with the hub itself clean all the grease out so it's in good condition and you can see if there's any damage on the inside on the inner shoulder here, make sure there's no damage or burrs. Clean them off with a file, otherwise you'll find your bearing will run misaligned. Okay, going back to the bearing races, there's a few other things you should know about them. Wheel bearings have identification numbers on them, and you can clearly see that here. It's a Timkin LM style bearing with a number, okay? Well, the race on the interior and the outer races have numbers on them and this is how you can ID a wheel bearing if you happen to be out in the wild somewhere and you need to replace your hub bearing. They correspond with the part numbers, all right? In this case, Timkin 1, which is LM603049 and LM603011. If you're buying from somebody who's vending Land Rover, then you'll have the Land Rover part number, RTC3429G, which is genuine, and the FDC4785 is the hub seal. These bearings and seal is for the Discovery 1 axle and you'll have to check with your axle number or vehicle type to make sure you get the right ones for your vehicle. And you will always replace wheel bearings as a pair and never individually. Thoughtful Land Rover parts vendors will supply a kit which has seals, gaskets, lock tab and a bearing set which are two bearings in here. This is the set we're going to use from Baymark on our axle. Okay, well to fit these I'm going to show you how to do them. First thing, you need to keep bearings wrapped up until you use them. We have the race which we're going to put in the hub and I'm putting this one back in the box, okay, and marking it as I as inner, inner wheel bearing, okay. 
Now, this is to ID because the races and bearings, the rollers are matched as sets. This will keep this clean while we're working outside. Right, so I'll get that out of the way and that's nice and safe. And the next thing to do is to knock the racing again with a punch with a nice flat edge on it. So what we do is to start the bearing race off gently, first of all, into the hub. Once she's sitting in there and she started to move down, this is an interference fit, so it's going to need a little bit of force to knock it into place. If you do it evenly and your punch doesn't slip, then that's fine. Just make sure that your punch each time is not going to scrape across the surface where the rollers are going to roll on. There will be a point where you get to the bottom, it bottoms out, the noise of the tapping will change and you can't push it any further. You can hear that? Now that is seated correctly. All right, remember this sound. Okay, so the race is in and that's nicely snug and home. Next thing to do is to put the other bearing race into place. All right. Now, again, with wheel bearings, they like to attract dirt, grease and whatever else, which is not healthy for them. You can see by this example here, the scoring on the inner race. This is because it's picked up some grit. So, taking it out of the packet, you've got to make sure that it's not going to get dropped. All right, so straight back into the box and put that somewhere out of the way while we deal with the race. Uh, same thing again, tapping it on the edge, making sure you don't slip across the uh, running faces and push it into place. Now, this takes a little bit of time. Make sure you're not going to damage anything else on the hub. You can see how the punch is on the edge of the bearing race, okay? Now this is a soft chisel, so it is actually being damaged as it's being knocked in, and not damaging the race. Right, so she's home as well. So we have the two bearing races that snugly fitted into the hub. Now this is what's happened to the chisel, it's been damaged. That's what you want, because it's soft steel. Just before we get to grease the wheel bearings, there's a little trick. Two pairs of gloves on. These are disposable. And with your grease, you're going to fill the hub cavity up with enough grease just to fill it. We're putting grease in between the cavity of the races and putting a little bit of grease on the races themselves. If you put too much grease in a hub, it will oxidize and cause problems with the bearings overheating. Right, so greasing the actual rollers themselves, you're trying to get the grease as much of it through into the rollers or between the rollers as you can. The best way to do this, if you don't have a greasing machine, is to get some and push it like so. So you're getting grease in between the rollers where it counts the most. Do it from both sides and take your time doing this. This grease happens to be blue. This is only a dye. Go by what's recommended for the wheel bearings. Usually it's an EP2 multi-purpose lithium grease. Now, once it's been greased, you give it a turn in the hub so the grease is spread. Then you can get on to the next bearing. All right. This one, we're going to grease in the same manner. And I'll repeat this again. It's pushing the grease between the rollers so we have an even spread. Once the grease has gone in there and you've pushed it in, that will be sufficient lubrication. All right, and it needs to be done on both sides like so. Take it from somebody who's been greasing trailer wheel bearings for nearly 20 years. Taking your time doing this operation will make sure that the bearing doesn't fail. Once you've got grease in there, just put it back in the packet and make sure it doesn't get dirty. All right. Now, the trick here is removing one set of gloves and you have a clean set underneath. So while we have the face up, we're going to put the seal in, which goes in this way. There is only one way a seal goes and the lip needs to be greased as well, just lightly. Okay, bearing race that we saved earlier, we can now use it in conjunction with a seal fitter and knock the bearing into place nice and squarely. Okay, there's a couple of ways of fitting seals. One way is recommended to have it uh, four mil deep. The other is to have the face flush with the shoulder of the hub. Check with the relevant workshop manual for your axle. 
Okay, well the seal fits in only one way and you have a lip on the outer as well. This is the genuine tool or the handle, mandrel for the genuine tool, which does not fit. You need an adapter with it and unfortunately it's very expensive. It doesn't work like this. So if I was to push it in like that, it would damage the outer lip. If I put a flat face on it, it will do the same thing. It will squash that and render the seal useless. So the best one is to use the bearing race, which fits nicely like so and the seal goes in like this. You can then use a flat object, i.e. like that, and then knock it directly in the center and it will go in square. Workshop manual, left hand side says, drive it the seal flush with the rear face of the hub. This I'm knocking it four mil below because this fits on this certain axle. Check with your workshop manual which is the right way don't forget that the lip of the seal needs to be lubricated as well. Because this is a, a double seal, the lubrication actually goes between the two lips, like so. And that is the correct way to do it for this type of seal. Okay, so the hub seals on, the bearings in on the inner bearing. We're going to fit the hub, like so. And you take it nice and square and even push it straight on, it should go. Then we have our outer bearing that we can slip into the stub and then the thrust plate. Once those are put in you can then put your adjuster nut on. If you want to know more about adjusting your wheel bearings there is a link below this video in the description that will take you through so you know how to do it properly.